Hi, this is Ben Seacrest from Accurate Fishing Products, uh, the makers of small reels for big fish. And today I want to take a moment and uh, talk to you guys about um, some fishing techniques that we used this last weekend for threshers off of thresher sharks off of Southern California. Um, I live in Dana Point, fish out of the harbor all the time, and yearly we have like a couple different runs of thresher sharks. And the thresher sharks will come, basically they're, they're migrating from north to south, and they'll come in to our bite, which basically is right here in Southern California. And we, uh, we see fish anywhere from 50 pounds to 500 pounds sometimes. But what happens, sometimes they're with bait balls, as they're traveling with the bait balls, they'll get into really shallow water. They get into water that's 70 to 100 feet deep. And what's fun about that is you can take basically anything you want out there to try to get them. You know, guys go out there on uh, stand-up paddle boards and try to catch them. Well, I'm not that brave, but this last weekend I went out and took a 16-foot Klamath boat, which is my little skiff that I have, and uh, basically called one of my buddies. He joined me, and what we went out there to do was to catch really big threshers on really small tackle. What we ended up using this weekend was the BX2 400. The BX2 400 holds about 300 yards of 50 pound braid, and this is AccuBraid. Um, basically, the rig that we were using here is a Bimini in the AccuBraid, and then a no name knot to 80 pound fluorocarbon. Well, guys are going 80 pound fluorocarbon. Thresher sharks have very small mouths, and with a very small mouth, they have very small teeth. So you can actually a lot of times hook them right in the side of the mouth and not hurt the fish at all, bring the fish in, cut the fish off, and off he goes. So what we've done, you know, over the years, we've fished them for many years, there's different ways you can catch them. Catch them trolling, uh, lead master baits, or a lot of guys will go through and troll high speed lures for them. The problem with the high speed lures a lot of times is the, the fish themselves, when they come up to the lure, they're trying to whack it with their tail. As they whack it with their tail, you'll snag them in the tail and you end up killing the fish because they drown. You're fighting them backwards all the time. So what we use a lot of times here is I'm into using small hooks and sinker rigs, you know, and I'll use live mackerel, live sardines, you know, and with a couple sinkers on it. So um, the other thing that was really important about this weekend is the fish that we were finding, we had a fish probably maybe 90 pounds, had another one that was a buck and a quarter, but we caught a fish that was like 200 pounds. When, the big, when you're fighting bigger fish, a lot of times you're going to do it for some length of time. It's nice to have small tackle that can actually put up with the abuse. Little BX2400 will put out 30 pounds of drag, but it has a high and low gear. And what's cool about the high and low gear is the low gear 3 to 1, as you're pulling on a fish and you get to a spot in 6 to 1 and you can't go through and do any, pull any more on the fish, all you do is you can pop it into low and you can actually take some turns on the handle. The one thing I was going to talk to you guys today about that's real effective with catching big fish, not only threshers but any fish, is this is our 7030 Extreme Rod. It's a graphite um, glass composite, but it's it's parabolic. We, we've designed the rods so that they actually take the pressure off of you and put them on the fish. But I see a lot of guys try to pump on these fish and they're using big tackle and the tackle's basically tiring them out. What we do with this thing is the rod's loaded, as the rod comes up, we take a couple more turns and low. If the fish decides to run at us, we put in the high, we can gain line and get him back into where he's sitting. Threshers will get their heads down. As they get their heads down, they keep their heads down. You have to move them slowly. Anytime you're jerking back and forth with the rod, it's like slapping someone. So the response you're going to get is a real erratic response you're going to do. With a tuna or a thresher or any of those type of fish, all you have to do is use the rod and the reel effectively. And one way to do that is just to slowly gain line as the rod comes up. No big jerking motions. Work from like 10 to 12 if you're going to do any sort of pulling at all. But anything goes higher than like 12, people tend to go up here, the rod gets straight, the fish's head goes down, he goes back down. That's what's cool about using the rod, just keeping the rod bent and winding line over the bent rod. That's the way to do it. But what I'm going to show you today is some of the uh, rigs that we use for catching the threshers. Um, and it should help you guys more effectively go out and have the information you need to go through and get a bite and land a fish. The one important thing about any of this stuff is, is conservation is huge, what's going on. 
A lot of guys killing those three, four hundred, five hundred pounders. Those are breeding fish. If you're going to take some fish to eat, take a smaller fish. In, in the smaller fish, they steak better anyways, and they're a lot easier to grill and stuff. Okay, the basic knots that we were talking about in, in our rigging for this little thresher rig that we're using this um, weekend was this is a 21 turn bimini knot, and you can see the bimini's here. Here's the double lines. See the double lines? Okay. And then here is our little no-name knot that I'm going to show you how to tie that. But before I show you the little no-name knot, let's show you another little trick that we did. Okay? So this is basically, this could be 60 pound and then you're going to your 80. A lot of times I don't want my sinker right on my hook. So I take my sinker and I put it on the leader. And if you look, see that knot right there stops it. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is, is capture the sinker so that it's not moving up and down the line. And then I take my leader here, all right, and I tie a double uni knot. You can find the double uni knot in the IGFA book, but it's side by side, loop. On the bigger side, you only do like three turns, okay? Then you'll pull it. We're gonna cinch that up in a minute. And on the smaller side, you do at least four, okay? So there's one, two, three, four, okay? Take both of them, wet them, but cinch them down a little bit. See how I cinched them down? See the tags? And slowly pull them together, okay? There they are as a double uni. Take your pliers. Cut the tags. Now watch this. This is a pretty trick. This takes that sinker and it captures it between the knots so it can't go anywhere. So by capturing it in between the knots, it keeps it off the hook. And then what I do with the next part is I'll go through and take my small 5-aught, 7-aught hook that I'm using for these threshers. There's two ways you can do it. You can tie a uni knot and cinch it up, or you can tie an old Mexican knot. The Mexican knot is right over left. Bring the tag like this. Bring the hook through the tag, and you're going around your thumb once. As you hold on, around your thumb, and then through your fingers. You take your hook, and you put your hook through that loop. You grab your running line, or your main line, start pulling down on that and what you're doing is you're actually able to control the size of the loop that you make. You don't want too big a loop. So then you just pull down on that and tighten on that. You pull this thing tight like this, there's your Mexican knot. Why do we do a loop knot like this? For fish and live bait we don't want the, the, braid or the, the monofilament to um, impair the action of the bait. So we want to look as natural as possible. These loop knots do that. They're not carrying around the mono or the fluorocarbon, so it's in inhibiting their swimming. This works really super good for live bait fishing <clears throat> or any, anything that you want to do in that, in that general vicinity. Okay, the basic knot that we've been talking about is the no-name knot, so I'm going to show you how to tie the no-name knot, okay? This is a bimini tied in 50-pound AccuBraid. The key to the bimini is grab a hold of the bimini towards the, towards the knot and pull up until you form a little loop at the top here. See the loop? Okay? We're going to grab this loop knowing that each one of these is even. Each one of the strands of the bimini is even. We're going to put the leader through there and we're going to pinch the leader and the bimini loop. And now we're going to do six wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take that and pop it back through the loop. All right. See, I cinch down on it a little bit like that. Then I wet it. Once it's wet, all we're doing now is pulling it tight. And if you pull it tight, there's your no name knot. The key to the no-name knot is to cinch the no-name knot down so it stops. There it stopped. It's on. It's bit on itself. So all you're doing now is taking that tag end right here, 
cutting that off. And there is your no-name knot. It's better to do more wraps with lighter lines. Say you're 30, 40, 50, you want to do eight wraps at least, maybe 10. On your 60, 80, 100, you can get away with six. But this knot is very compact. It goes through the guides well. It's super strong. And it's the knot that I use a lot for all different types of fishing. But that's the no-name knot. We appreciate you watching our videos, and we hope you catch fish here. Thanks a lot.